Hi guys, it is an absolutely gorgeous day here in the collapse of global industrial civilization here in uh, Garfield, Texas under the shadow of the two buzzards now sitting in my dead lightning strike uh, cottonwood tree here on this lovely Thursday, April 23rd. 2020s. That makes it the day after the 50th anniversary of Earth Day. Uh, so, oh yes, I am Sam Mitchell. This is Collapse Chronicles, and this is my little co-pilot, Sancho Panza, doing, getting back to business here on this channel, doing what we used to do every day, and that's chronicling the collapse of a planet. So once again, I, uh, I took my team of bloodhounds and my electron microscope over to the mainstream media the day after Earth Day to see if there is one story, one story anywhere on the mainstream media today about the collapse of a planet. It goes without saying, not one mention on the mainstream media about uh, the, you know, the 10, e even the 10 biggest uh, catastrophic risks to humanity. Uh, couldn't find one story on even one of the 10 catastrophic risks to humanity. So I went back over to my new source for environmental news, which is simply called News Now. News Now. Uh, you should really sign up and sign up, you know, bookmark their environmental stories. And they search all over. Uh, it's just one of these headline shopping services, but they actually have a good environmental news. So uh, I picked three, and uh, we're going to decide which one to run with. They finally uh, have a a nod to Earth Day a day late here. Maybe this was actually came out yesterday, but uh, from the conversation called uh, Earth Day, the roots of our current environmental crisis go back 12,000 years. And so I thought, okay, well, this could be interesting, but then I go on the article and all they talk about for the first half of the article as they go back 12 weeks talking about the C word. Uh, anyway, so I can't stop there. So let's go over, uh, check out the next one, <clears throat> several versions of this story. Microplastics are found for the first time in Antarctic sea ice as human pollution reaches the most remote regions of the planet. So, uh, what's this about? Evidence of human pollution has finally reached the most remote wilderness on Earth as polymer fragments have been discovered in Antarctic sea ice. Scientists have found microplastics in an ice core taken from the frozen continent and believe it is the first such evidence of the kind. Similar microplastic pollution has already been found in Antarctic surface waters, surface sediment, and in snow. Uh, the plastic was surrounded by algae, and the scientists believe krill, you know, the bottom of the food chain, believe that krill, which feast, which feast on sea ice, could be eating plastic particles. And then I find out this research was from 2009, 11 years ago. So let's just go over to look at some more recent evidence. And this is kind of the second wave of recent evidence. 
I remember just reporting on uh, a, a similar story to this uh, recently, and now we have new satellite data backing up uh, the, these other recent claims made a few months ago. Satellite data show the highest emissions ever measured from U.S. oil and gas operations. <clears throat> this would be from the good old Permian Basin in West Texas. <clears throat> Findings published today in the journal Science Advances show that oil and gas operations in America's sprawling Permian Basin are releasing methane at twice the average rate found in previous studies of 11 other major U.S. oil and gas regions. The new study was authorized, was authored by scientists from <clears throat> the Environmental Defense Fund, Harvard University, Georgia Tech, and the Netherlands Institute for Space Research. Uh, this is quoting Dr. Stephen Hamburg, chief scientist at Environmental Defense Fund, quote, these are the highest emissions ever measured from a major U.S. oil and gas basin. There is so much methane escaping from Permian oil and gas operations that it nearly triples, it nearly triples the 20-year climate impact of burning the gas they are producing. These findings demonstrate the rapidly growing ability of satellite technology to track emissions of these and to provide the data, the data needed, blah, blah, blah. Uh, okay. <clears throat> Based on 11 months of satellite data, uh, encompassing 200,000 individual readings taken across the 160,000 square kilometer basin, you know, the Permian Basin in West Texas and Eastern New Mexico, uh, from May 28 through March 2019, uh, data show that Permian oil and gas operators are losing methane at a rate equal to 3.7% of their, of their gas production. The, west, the wasted methane, damn you, the wasted methane, which is the main component in natural gas, is enough to supply 2 million uh, households. Methane is a potent greenhouse gas, anthropogenic emissions of which cause over a quarter of today's warming. Reducing methane from oil and gas operations is the fastest, most cost-effective way to slow the rate of warming even as the necessary transition to a net zero carbon economy continues. Uh, yeppers, yeppers, yeppers. Now, of course, you know, I'm sure some of you, uh, I need to be real careful where I tread here because I have to uh, brush up against the C word here. I know a lot of people are probably shrugging this story off because this research was from a year ago and they're claiming that uh, they are pretty much shutting down all of these fracking operations in the Permian Basin. Uh, well, I, I, I got some bad news for you. No, number that they are they are shutting down a, a, a little bit, but uh, the inconvenient truth to anyone believing that, uh, you know, the C word is going to uh, reduce the, uh, the net effect of this, uh, I can go back to reading that story on these orphaned 
oil and gas wells as more and more of these uh, people bail, uh, these oil companies shutting down. What they're doing is just shutting down. Uh, they're closing up shop and, and running for the hills. And probably my guess is there's every bit as much methane leaking and probably more methane leaking out of these, uh, the, these fracking sites being shut down as are being uh, produced by the damn fracking sites that haven't shut down. Anyway, just uh, to, to burst your little inconvenient truth bubble. Oh yeah, guys. And uh, I meant to start off with this, but uh, I'm just going to wrap up here. I, I know that a bunch of you are wanting me to review this excellent documentary called Planet of the Humans, but uh, this is a family show, so I cannot, I, I, I do not know how to review the uh, new documentary Planet of the Humans and not violate my own uh, rule about F-bombs and other uh, things. So I do give it, I, I give it a four out of five dead orangutan rating. Uh, excellent documentary. Kudos to Jeff director Jeff Gibbs and Michael Mann for putting it out there. Uh, if you dig deeply enough in the Doomosphere, you might find some uh, reviews uh, out there in the Doomosphere now that reflect my honest, my honest review of the thing that you're going to be on your own for finding that particular review uh, because Sam Mitchell's in enough trouble on Collapse Chronicles as it is. Uh, so that's all we're going to say about that. But do watch Planet of the Humans if you have not done so already and send it along to anybody that you know still swallowing this big lie about renewable, green, clean energy. And with that, I'm going to wrap up today's Chronicle of the Collapse, get back to uh, raking dead leaves out from under my dead cottonwood tree. And the little dog needs to get that squirrely in there and that, that, that tree like that. Get that squirrely like that. Bye, guys.